Good morning, everyone. Welcome to my lesson. It's me, Miss Ajangu. Thanks for watching. How are you? How are you doing? Good to see you. Take care. It's for me. I'm very great. So let's start today's lesson. The topic which I am going to present today is Unit 10. America and the world. You see this topic on the screen. So before taking our topic, let's just define our objectives, okay? So here we have, uh, we are going to take today uh, grammar theme B to do and have auxiliary and main verbs. Then vocabulary, British and American English. Of course, we have, uh, we should put here objectives. By the end of the lesson, the students will be able first uh, to revise uh, the verbs uh, to be, to do, to have. B. Students will be able to distinguish the differences between American and British English. The third one is to get an additional information about the culture of America. So, before discussing today's topic, just uh, I want to know how much do you know the American culture? You see, the US of America is a North American nation that is the world's most dominant economic and military power. Likewise, its cultural imprint spans the world, led in large part by its popular culture expressed in music movies and television. And you know that there are 52 states in America. You see, Amer the United States of America is one of the biggest countries in the world. So, and here I, you see the flag of USA. And there is an interesting question. Which of these statements about America are true? Why do you think so? You should discuss it at home. But here, question is, how much do you know about the USA? Are the statements true or false? And there are 10 interesting questions. Yeah, you should answer that this sentence is wrong or true, true or false. If it's true, prove your sentence. If it's false, again, prove. For example, the first, let's take the first sentence. The US has a higher percentage of millionaires than any other country. Do you think so? If you think so, you should say that really America is one of the richest countries in the world. Now let's take another one. Number 10. In the US, football is known as soccer, the name with the sport had originally been called at British public schools. We know that soccer is an American football, yes? In Britain it's called as football. In America they call it this game as a soccer. These are interesting questions and you should just answer true or false. Okay, then for grammar, I told that today you will have what we uh, verbs to be, to do, and to have as an auxiliary and main verbs. Mostly these verbs are what used as an auxiliary verbs. But today we have to take some grammar bank and we should distinguish the what the differences of using these verbs in the sentences. Now let's go to grammar bank. It's on page 150. You see grammar bank here. First, uh, let us uh, listen to some sentences. Yeah. Five point twenty-five. One. His name was David. They haven't been here before. Two. I'm sitting on the bus. They aren't coming to the party. 
I was cycling to work when I saw him. Were they watching TV when you phoned? She's been learning Japanese for two years. They haven't been working here long. Lots of clothes are now being made in the Far East. Millions of books have been digitized. Okay, you have heard the word to be as the main and auxiliary verb. When do we use to be as a main verb and auxiliary verb? Here are written the usage of this verb. First one, we can use be as a main verb in a sentence. Number two, we also use as an auxiliary verb. When do we use as an auxiliary verb? We use M, is, R as auxiliaries in the present continuous. We used was, were as auxiliaries in the past continuous. We use has been, have been as auxiliaries in the present perfect continuous. We use had been as an auxiliary verb in the past perfect perfect continuous. We use all tenses of be as an auxiliary in the passive, as you see. When we use uh, these all tenses, uh, to be is used as an auxiliary in passive. Uh. Clear? Then, verb to do. Again, let us listen the sentences. 5.26 1. What do you do? I did my homework last night. Two. She doesn't speak English. Where do they live? They didn't go to the theatre. Did you enjoy the film? So, this is the use of the verb to do as the main and auxiliary verb. We can use do as the main verb in the sentence. We use do, don't, does, doesn't as auxiliaries in the present simple and did, didn't as auxiliaries in the past simple. So let's come to the verb to have. 5.27 Number 1 I have two brothers and a sister. He's having a shower at the moment. What did you have for dinner? Two. I have to be at the airport at 11. We had our computer repaired last week. Three. They've bought a new car. I haven't seen him recently. Has he ever been to Spain? I was sure I'd seen him before. We were hungry because we hadn't had breakfast. Had she tried to phone you before she arrived? This is the use of uh, the verb to have as main verb and auxiliary verb. We can use have as a main verb in a sentence. It can be action or non-action verb. With have to and have something done, have is also a main verb. We use have, haven't, has, hasn't as auxiliaries in the present perfect. And the last usage, we use had, hadn't as auxiliaries in the past perfect. So, you use these verbs in your water speech, everyday speech. And I think you just you have just revised your what uh, the use of these verbs. And the, under the, this uh, grammar scene, you see some exercises, uh, of course, concerning with today's uh, grammar scene. 
I think you do it at home and pass me or send me. Now let's come to our topic. So the next here we have uh, talked about the uh, the grammar topic and for pronunciation for what we should just here listen some uh, we have listening. Exercise 5.28. Let us listen. It's sentence stress. Five point twenty eight. One. The capital of the USA is Washington, DC. Two. It isn't New York. Three. When are your friends arriving? Four. I have a house in New Jersey. Five. How long have you known your best friend? Six. I haven't seen my grandparents for ages. Seven. Anne does Pilates twice a week. Eight. Where does your sister live? Nine. My brother doesn't like animals. So, did you pay attention here? How the sound, the vowel sound do, are, have, and does have when they are unstressed. We have unstressed cells here. Yes? When are your friends arriving? When are your friends arriving? Again, the one was interesting. Here we have the word here. Where does your sister live? Where does your sister live? How this sounds or these words are sounded in the unstressed situation. So at him you should complete these rules with your partner, okay? When be do and have stressed, then it is usual stress, unstressed in positive centers of question in this way. So our topic for today is as America, you see here several pictures. For speaking and reading, we have the following aspects. American culture important in your country. How are the following aspects of America culture important in your country? What do you think of them? Do you prefer them to ones from your country? Why, why not? Films and programs. Music, food, chain stores, coffee shops, etc fashion technology so and people here they were done some surveys on american influence in the world the what influence of or impact of america to the world read about a survey on america's influence in the world what do europeans like most at least about american culture what do americans think you should do this task and then you can check your answers. Where do you, well, you have mistakes or you haven't. So who's negative about American culture? You would be surprised here. So, should we start? Now let's read more facts about the U.S. also we have here communication. So, in recent, who's negative about American culture? You'd be surprised. In a recent survey, the Wall Street Journal asked more than 18,000 people in 18 countries, 16 European nations, plus the US and Russia, to identify the best and worst parts of US cultural influence in the world. What do European think? You see, 18 countries, 18,000 people were asked. It was a survey. What Europeans think? Among Europeans, 32% said US influence was negative, while 26% gave a positive response. 40% said American films and television programs were the best contribution, making this the most popular category overall. All of the European countries said American food was the most contribution. 
65% of French people gave this answer the highest in the group. This is the thought of uh, Europeans. Now let's take what America, Americans think. Surprisingly, many Americans view their own country more negatively than Europeans do. It's interesting, yeah? 46% of Americans said the US has a negative influence in the world, while 33% described it, it as positive. Americans named a number of different things as their country's best contribution to world culture, including the food at 11%. When asked to identify America's worst contribution, 32% of Americans pointed to film and television, much higher than in any other country. This is the survey you see it's taken from journal this year, the Wall Street Journal. Who's negative about American culture? And from this part, we know that Americans think that they are meaning their opinions are different from Europeans thinking. Now, Let's listen to this uh, listening. Then we'll look what to consolidate our lesson. 5.29. Here you have the table. The instruction is uh, listen to three Americans. Three Americans talking about what do they think are their country's best and worst contribution. Then you should, after listening, we'll do some tasks. So now let us listen. Five point twenty nine. One. Andy. I think one of the best contributions America has made has been the uh, Hollywood film industry, uh, especially um, pre turn of this current century. So we're looking at films from the Marx Brothers and Harold Lloyd uh, uh, to films like Gone with the Wind. Um, than films from somebody like Martin Scorsese or Woody Allen. I think these Hollywood movies have brought American culture um, and made it a higher culture in many ways and made it very exciting. I definitely think that the American ability to consume food in such vast quantities, such big sizes and mega sizes, it's been talked about in so many ways, supersizing food, uh, I think that's a bad contribution that America has made to the uh, general things in the world. Two, Molly. I think the best thing about America is the can-do spirit, that you can do anything you want if you work hard enough and you really believe in your dream. I think that's great. Um, I think the downside of um, America is all the chains, the sort of global chains that are... Um, set up in all countries now and so there's there's shops that are the same everywhere and, and um, I think that's really a bad thing. Three, Jenny. I think one of America's best contributions worldwide would be our effect to people's positivity and energy. We really are a new country and I think that's helped us to have that kind of onwards, upwards, bigger, better kind of attitude. And I think that affects everyone and people look to America for that. But on the other hand, they look to us for other things like not being very healthy, being kind of fat in general, and not really having so much positivity when it comes to our bodies. You see, students, very interesting. What uh, opinions, yes, about their what own country? Three persons, Andy, Molly, and Jenny, were asked about the what, uh, good sides and the bad sides of medical pros and cons, and they told their opinions. You should fill these gaps. Okay, next time. Compare answers with your partner, and then listen again and complete the chat. Is there anything that surprised you here? Or do you agree with more? And you should uh, Tell your own what uh, opinions, uh, share your viewpoint about American uh, culture, what is good and what is bad. So, next page, in our next page, we have uh, British and American English. So, 
see here? What do you see here? Bridge in American English. What do these American bridge words mean? Right? The bridge words are the same word. Here we have the column. This bridge in the water on the side of the bridge words, there are no words. And then American words. We have these words. We use these words. For example, cookie. Do we use the word cookie? It means what? Maybe candies, maybe sweeties, maybe biscuits. Then telephone. We use the word mobile phone, yeah? Then restaurant we have, movie, movie theater. Now, you should fill again this column, then check your answer. Here you see the key, yes? It's a key. They write the true answers of these words. But before pressing the key, you should fill these words. Then you should again listen and check the answers. Now let's, for example, let's use our toolbox, for example. Yes, we here we have a pen. You see, let's take one pen. And then we can write here, cookie, for example. Let's say candy, yes, here. The next word, telephone, we have the word mobile phone, yeah? Then we have, for example, restaurant. Let's take, say here, what do you know? Maybe toilet, yeah? Yeah, in this way. Then also maybe fries, parking lot, garbage, vacation, maybe here vacation, we have the word we use for holidays. Now, you see, in this way you should fill the, all the gaps. Then we have, for example, the word also movie, we know the word, we use the word fills, yes? Here, right? now let's check. Is it true or false? Let's hide our tools. Now let's check our key. Yeah. Let's just see the, all the answers. You see? Ah, the first word we have the word biscuit. Not candies, but biscuits. Mobile phone, we have uh, the true answer. Then toilet, again true answer. Film you have. Uh, then seven, we have holiday. That's it. There's only one word we have. In one word we have mistake, yes? So fill it. Uh, then, also then, you should match these words. Lift, maybe here. What's it lift? Lift, it may be elevate, yeah? Then sweets, you can find from this part, American, how American people say the word sweets in American English. Then here we have Six things Americans do that drive Brits crazy. Then six Brits do that drive Americans crazy. Two opposite, what tips or information. And here you, there are, you see some, what the headings of the, yeah, that you should put to these information, headings. For the first, they also put the heading saying I like your accent. Six things American do that drive Brits crazy. Then six things Brits do that drive Americans crazy. Brits, it's Britons, yes. I think at home you can put the head, read these information and put the headlines. They're very interesting. You see? Then Read the articles again, after it, read the articles again, and find words which mean in this way. The word, the explanation is given, and you should just put here the one word from these uh, texts. It will be your homework for the next time. And I want just uh, to finish our lesson today uh, with a song about uh, America. Just uh, what uh, and it's an interesting song. Now let's listen together, okay? Five point thirty three. Get up. Ow. Oh, 
Okay, did you like the song? Did you relax? Now let us conclude today's lesson. So today uh, we have uh, taken, uh, we have just taken uh, the topic America and the world, uh, Americans' influence on the world, uh, its good sides and the bad sides. Uh, then uh, we took uh, the difference between American and British English, and of course we revised our grammar to be, to do, to have their usage as an auxiliary and main verb. I'm glad that you've been with me in these uh, 10 minutes. If my lesson helped you, I would be very glad. So, see you next time. Goodbye. Thank you for attention, for your comment, for watching my lesson. Thanks.